Hello, Mojave County. This is Jansen Viegas, and welcome to the first episode of The Jansen Show, until further notice. Today, we have a wonderful guest star speaker, MVP legend, man and myth, Mr. Donnie Reynolds. Good evening, everybody. So, um, Donnie. Yes, sir. Today, we're going to go over a few topics um, referencing your career in the car industry, uh, maybe some advice that you have for anybody exiting high school, being that you found so much success so early outside of high school. And uh, I need help with my title to this show. I don't know what direction to take. And you being a man that I respect highly, I wanted to get an input. That being the case, let's start with the titles. What do you think would be a good name for the show, man? Well, Jan Daddy V in the 928 is a good one, I agree. Jan Daddy V in the 928 is good. Unless I was to become one of the permanent co-hosts on this, then I'd also want to be mentioned. But that should right. be, that could be it's kind of early. That could be done in later. What about this? Kind of early to talk about being on the. I think I'd really like to. I'd really like to see how you approach this entire thing with me. So, depends right. on how it ends up going. Maybe that would give us. Maybe that would just naturally give itself a title. Ideally, I brought you on to be a guest, not to take over and become a co-host and tell me. I mean, I don't understand why that's the route you wanted to take. <laughs> I, I'm not saying that that's my, my goal. I appreciate it. It's just, just in reference to a out. title. What do you think would be a good title for, you know, original idea? Donnie and Jansen's Again, talk show. Again, you started with your name first. <laughs> Donnie's, Donnie's talk show co-hosting Jansen Viegas. It's in the air. It flows. It we'll flows move good. to a different topic. Apparently, okay. you don't understand where I'm getting at. Just that's fine. It's my first episode, and you're trying to become... <laughs> A co-host or make me a co-host. I just think it'd be fun. You're my boss at work. Look you don't at have our to synergy. Be... It I works. I understand, but I started the synergy or synergy or. Uh, you asked a question. I just fed off of it, and I actually kind of like where it's going. I asked a question, and you took over my show. Initially, right away, within the first 32 seconds. Not my intentions. You have some really nice stuff written down here. You're right. I have a total of 14 words jotted down on this uh, notepad. Um, Donnie Reynolds. Sir. Do you have a middle name? I have two middle names. Actually, well, it depends on the oh, way you look at it. Quite Hispanic. I have either two middle names or three first names. It's Donnie Michael Ray Reynolds. That's not bad. Mine is Jansen Armando Villegas Sanchez de la Oya Paquiao Jr. Tercero. So it's not bad what yours is. Yours is pretty cool, too. I feel like it's like a country singer vibe. Mm -hmm. Michael Ray. I can make that my country singer name. I think it I sounds agree. good. It flows. But yeah, that is my name. It's been my name since birth. Donnie, not Donald. There's no Donald on the birth certificate, not on the driver's license. Donald does not exist. Now, it's hinted that you have a nickname, um, Dynamic Don. That nickname. Okay, yes. Yes, I do have that nickname. Is that a thing? I do have the I did. That nickname was actually birthed to me from my mother-in-law, mm -hmm. Nicole Radcliffe, who, shout out to her, she's awesome. Ooh, Nicole, happy uh, birthday. That actually, she was telling me, she's actually the one that got me into the car business, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. What she had told me was that I needed to come up with a nickname, a name that would grab somebody that people could kind of like, um, what would you say, gravitate to, so mm -hmm. that when they thought of me, they thought of Dynamic Donnie. And so what ended up happening is she pulled me over to her house, had a camera ready, had it, and put me through like a little miniature photo shoot with a little tiny miniature wow. um, toy car. And uh, it was a black and white photo shoot. And, after that, she started looking through the pictures and then started throwing off a bunch of names. Like, she came out with a couple of, you know, pretty goofy names, pretty cool names, and then, I don't know, she ended up sticking with Dynamic Donnie. It actually wasn't me. I think it fits very well, to be honest. I'd like to say so myself. Most people would agree. So, you get out of high school, you're a superstar in high school, I heard. Um, what, you played football, correct? Played football in high school, yeah. You and Joe were teammates at the time? Yeah, like, Joe was my backup. But now you and I are best friends essentially and yeah like so same as Joe was my backup in high school for my football position Jansen my backup for my talk show that I just started right recently. but it could be announced that I've taken Joe's position in a sense as far as best friends go uh, in the sense of right now on camera everybody wants to know absolutely not would that be the appropriate response on my no, show I think as far as the show goes we should probably say yeah we're really close no bad blood since we moved out, nothing. It's you mentioned since we moved out, so was there bad blood while we were roommates or that I didn't know about? I just, I just remember a particular night. Um, we don't have to reference it. We don't have to reference it. No, I just... I know what you're talking about. Just so that they can understand like, where we come from. I just think you're being really mean. No, no, no. There was a particular night, 
And uh, I remember waking up in the back of a Ford Fusion by myself, thinking to myself, oh, no, at some point in time, Jansen's going to pull up. Sounds like a personal problem. His car, right? No, it was definitely your car. I'm like, man, that'd be awesome if he came and picked me up right now. It's like 7 a.m. I'm exhausted. I'm cold. It's like 35 degrees outside. And then he'll pick me up. He'll take me back to our apartment. We'll throw a movie on. We'll relax for the rest of the day, snuggled up on the couch. Well, that actually did not happen at all. I had to find my own way home. Um, and I walked up three flights of stairs, exhausted, 7 a.m. in the morning. To be fair, right? you have to walk up those flights of stairs every Regardless, single time. Regardless, but I could have walked up there with company. I don't understand why you emphasize that you had to do that. Alone is what I'm emphasizing. Fair enough. Now. And I opened the door to find Jansen. I was smart and I He's called a cab. Home. He's been home the whole time. I was resting he my feet. He looked so comfortable. You looked, you looked so comfortable, I was actually angry. And I remember it was the coolest thing. I get he it. He was sleeping straight on his back. And he had he was doing this thing with with this piece of toast with a little piece of a little spread of peanut butter on it and it just sat directly on his chest like this and he just held it the entire time and did not move a muscle it's a toast holder yeah it was impressive but anyways that's the only bad blood i had with you Moot, living with you thank you for uh, making it a point to mention that story other than that best friends moving best friends on show. yes moving on from goofball to legend is a topic that i have noted here donnie reynolds mm. The reason I note that is because anybody that knows you knows that you're a goofball, you know, um, in the most polite way that I could possibly say that. You know, you're uh, outgoing, you're funny, you're, you know, the center of attention everywhere except where I'm around. And now you're this successful, you know, well-established figure in the community and within the car industry. You just built an outstanding and beautiful home. Um, tell us a little bit about your journey exiting high school and, and you know, the transition that you had to make to uh, be where you're at now. So, believe it or not, I'm still a big goofball. I believe it. I've just, I've just found a better way of um, using it at the right times. Mm -hmm. But as far as high school goes, I graduated high school in 2016. After graduating, I had like way too much fun for like about three months. Right. Like absolutely way too much fun that it could have definitely put me on a different trajectory as far as where my life path could have went. And so, <coughs> again, my mother-in-law pulled me aside, talked some sense to me and said, hey, listen, if you're going to start having a lot of fun and you don't see college as a route or uh, the next step in your life, you have any goals or aspirations to go and attend a college, then you need to do something and you need to find a career path that's going to promise you whatever it is. And she goes, you can talk a lot and you want to win every argument that you're ever in or something you're very debatable and essentially is what she told me she said why not give selling cars a shot and at that point in time the way i grew up i had never even stepped foot into a dealership never been around a new car so i didn't really and i honestly was just going through the motions when she had said to do it and i just didn't want to make her upset so i said right. okay that's fine just sign me up for the interview so i went to the interview don't remember much of it i ended up selling cars at a different dealership for a couple years um, in and out, I went through one promotion, but it wasn't really too big of a deal. It was like being in from just selling cars on the floor to dealing with the internet leads. Um, then we made the transition, you know, the eight or the eight of us or whatever it was, seven. To go, seven of us to go to Finley Motor Company in 2018. And from there, I had a, a couple patchy months, uh, actually maybe a couple patchy years, where when I first got there, I accelerated really quickly because I was excited, new job, and then. You know, my goofball, my immaturity kind of stepped out a little bit and shined a little bit brighter than my potential, I'd say was, is a good way to put it. And uh, I got into some trouble. You know, I didn't take it as serious. I did just enough to coast by just so I could make sure that I didn't lose anything that I had worked for, but I wasn't working for much more than that. And on top of that, Miranda, who I've been with for seven years, obviously, right? Shout um, out Miranda. Shout out Miranda. She was living in Phoenix at the time. She had just, when I started working at Finley, she went and moved to Phoenix to go to college. And so that threw a big damper on where I kind of was going to land. I was like, man, should I, should I go chase the Phoenix lifestyle and go work in a metro store? Should I stay here with everything that I've already worked for, with the team that I'm already comfortable with, people that I love to work with? Um, and stay in a, a small community where people know me already? So I was, and that, Juggling back and forth between those two thoughts was probably took up about a year of my life as far as working goes. Thank God mm -hmm. that COVID ended up coming through because 
she had to leave campus. She had to leave campus for a good while for, I mean, I don't think they went back to, to school for like a year or so. Well, in that year or so time, I gave myself an ultimatum. I said, okay, what you need to do is you either need to buy a house or you need to move, one or the other. Right. So impulsively, I just went and bought my first home. Good. I didn't have any money down. I didn't have, like, I wasn't, obviously, I had just been coasting by, so I didn't have a lot of money set to the side. Not a big nest to lean on. So I reached out to a real estate agent who I, whom I've used like three or four times now, and she just, I mean, it was a pretty brutal process. It was very aggravating for both of us to deal with what we had to deal with to finally get approved. Got approved for the house, and then I had to break the news to Miranda that I was anchored there. And from there, I wasn't done, you know, being immature, being a goofball. It took, you know, I thought I... People like you and me are never done being goofballs or immature. No, man. no. I just, and I had several conversations with a lot of leaders at the store whom I, I do admire a lot that I couldn't grasp at the time because it just... I wasn't able to get the right perspective at the time of. So eventually, you know, talk after talk after talk, you know, frustrating this guy after this guy after this guy. It was to the point where I think they were all just about done with me. And when I realized that I had nobody else to frustrate and that it was kind of like, okay, like Donnie, you've actually wreaked some havoc. Like right. I've been the Tasmanian devil for three years, you know, just tearing up room after room and right. whatever. So um, I was like, ah, you know what? I don't like that. That's probably not good. Like, you know, I have people relying Tired on me financially. It. You know, yeah, and I'm done with it. I'm, I'm, what happened, to, like, ultimately is I got sick of being so stressed out of being at work. Right. But I like the job. It pays me well. I can do very well for myself. So there's a lot of perks to it. I was just always miserable with some certain point. Not the job itself. Always causing so many complications. I'm sick of drama. So I just decided, well, if I can't get everybody else, else around me to change, the only option I guess I have is for me to change. And so I did do that and you know I've had my I've had my challenges since then as well, you know, it's probably been about a year since I've really stepped up, but I enjoy work now. Like so I genuinely enjoy being there. Again. Sounds like a lot of the uh, energy that you used towards these immature things you started directing only towards yourself and that allowed you to genuinely scale, you know, um, financially, emotionally, mentally. Um, do you think that if it weren't for the mentorship or, you know, the role models in your life that you would have gone down the same path? Or do you think that having enough of an open mind to be coachable and, and listen to the guidance that was being provided had a big influence on, you know, where you are now? So my pride tells me to answer that question one way. My pride tells me to answer, of course, I would have been successful, regardless, regardless. of whatever it is. I mean, just about anything that I do or participate in, I'm typically top I agree. couple. Like, I, I do pretty well all the time. Agreed. But I'm also not stubborn enough to admit that it did help me a lot. What actually helped me a lot was some of the disappointment that I got in certain things that I did. Obviously, it made my heart feel a certain type of way. I'd never like to feel that way again, so there's certain mistakes I just will not repeat. Gotcha. Well, as many mistakes as you, as you make, as many as you're not willing to make again will limit the amount of mistakes you can make in the future, right? right. Which, if you look at it as like a, the base of a pyramid, you have all these mistakes that you can make, and you make all of them. Well, you just start cutting down on them, and at some point in time, you'll just rise up to the top and perform to the best of your abilities. I guess it would probably be a good way to articulate that. No, it's well visualize said. Visualize that. What, where you, where you are now to where you want to be, what is in the future for Donnie Reynolds? What type of uh, goals do you have now? I mean, you just built your gorgeous home. You're very stable. Do you have any plans of change moving forward, or are you just genuinely trying to, you know, enjoy everything that you've worked to obtain at this point? So, obviously, I do enjoy my fun time. My... My, uh, my free time, I take very seriously. I like to go and who knows, maybe my free time is just going to be a day that I lay on the couch and watch Netflix or hang out with my friends and, and watch football. Absolutely. That day is equally as important to me as going out and getting out and um, going to a big city and, and experiencing new food. But really what's been driving at me lately, like digging at me almost as, as much as buying a house was, is that I need to find other sorts of passive income. Right. Obviously, we're in a position, you know, thank God, where we can where we, ha we make very well, we make a pretty good amount Thank of money. God. So I just have not been as responsible as investing that money elsewhere. That's where I'd like to focus on in this next step. Gotcha. This last year, uh, actually a little bit more than a year, I 
dumped everything that I had into this house that I was building. And, you know, I, it, I put a lot of money into it, and it turned out to be a really beautiful project, and I absolutely love it. Gorgeous. But Gorgeous now yourself. I think to myself, if I had that same interest and, you know, maybe investing into a cryptocurrency, which is really big right now, and it seemed to play out for a lot of people that know what they're doing, or uh, real estate, rental properties, things along those lines. You know, my mind, there's really a lot of things. It's exciting. If I can, yeah, once this whole house situation is done and tied up, I'd like to invest that same time and, and effort that I had into the home because now I have I won't have it right right so once that's done I got to invest that time and effort elsewhere and when I inv and what I want to do is invest that time and effort into an additional passive income for me so that way and it's not to say that the car business is not my future I don't mean that no but I think that there's so much more potential I mean you see a lot a lot of rich people a lot of rich and famous people like Grant Cardone for example um, started off in the car business 10x 10x started off in the car business, um, it provided him with an income that he was able to create into what he has now, which he has an empire. I agree. You know, and so. he started in the car industry, similar to right. our stories, uh, in a sense, um, but at a later age. So I think I'm excited for everything. You know, I mean, right. I've been watching you grow as an individual and as a professional since, you know, you uh, began the car industry, and pff, it's crazy the amount of leaps forward that you've taken and it's impressive and it's uh, definitely admirable you know so I, I definitely you. pay my respects to you in that sense um, tell us about your two dogs you have two very beautiful unique dogs that are 100 percent obedient to their so, father yeah so I have I have a, an all-black German Shepherd and I have an all-white German Shepherd the all-white German Shepherd is a purebred German Shepherd we had to drive to California and spent a whole bunch, I didn't actually drive, I sent my, my, other, my significant other to go down there and she purchased him, spent a lot of money on him. Um, and he's a cool dog. He's really cool, don't get me wrong. I'm very disappointed. You have a favorite. I have a favorite. Oh my I God. I do have a favorite. I'm very disappointed that that dog that we spent so much money on and looks like this really cool dire wolf does not like me. Really? <laughs> I mean, he tolerates me. He's a hater. He tolerates me, but he's a hater. He absolutely loves Miranda and adores her. That's where he spends all of his time. Wow. He slips on his, uh, The only thing that he'll give me, like, so this is, like, put, it, put it to this example. If oh, me it's and Miranda, you. Oh, if me and Miranda are laying on the couch together, right, and I'm laying on this side and she's laying on this side, this dog will crawl right up in between us, turn his ass towards me, set straight on me so that he could put no. his chin and paws <laughs> on Miranda, dude. And I get that, and I'm like, Whereas then I got Kai. Kai is actually, you know, daddy's little disappointment because he was supposed to be a lot bigger than he is. His ears were supposed to both stand up. He was supposed to have a lot. He ended up looking like a sheep dog, and he's got a little, he's got a funny ear too, but he's actually the coolest dog, and he's a lot more protective than our big white beast. Right. So, yeah. Well, they're pretty I cool. would say that if your dogs were humans, they would have daddy issues growing up just because it sounds like you have a favorite and you're disappointed in one. Yeah, so one would have daddy issues. The other one was a... Daddy's little disappointment is your reference. Ah, I say that behind his back. I wouldn't say that to his face. Okay, he's gotcha. very sweet. Yeah, so he wouldn't have daddy face. issues. No, no, no. He'd be cool. He'd just try to fight you when he's older, and he found out. Yeah, at some point in time, he'd probably try to challenge my masculinity. And he's then he be would the actual alpha in the house. Yeah, probably. You'd have to dominate. Yeah. So, Donnie Reynolds, sir. In reference to a subject that most people out there have been wanting to touch on. What do you do to obtain and maintain <laughs> such an amazing jaw structure? <laughs> so this is actually really cool. So I learned at a very young age, right, that <clears throat> you can spend all this time dieting. You can spend all this time spending your time at the gym. So you sacrifice time hanging out with your friends. You sacrifice time. Ew. Yeah, that's, you sacrifice sleep. All for what? For a beautiful jawline? I found a different way to go about it. So what I did, I completely jumped out of the gym altogether. Okay. I refuse to do it. It doesn't help me. It doesn't benefit in me okay. at all. What I decided to do muscle confusion was start lack, lacking in hygiene. Okay. Right? So the less I keep up with this, the more it started to grow. And I started to realize I can manipulate and mold this beard into whatever shape that I'd like it to be. Ah. You know what I mean? So at this point in time, my second chin, you Covered. can't see it, right? No. My jaw has a line. Okay. So it's, it's played out, and like I said, anybody that's wasting their time in the gym, unless you can't grow facial hair, of course, like Hayden, for example, he can't grow facial hair. He looks like a giant 15-year-old. Yes, he does. He has to spend time in the gym. Yes. Me, genetically blessed and gifted from God himself, Agreed. I Agreed. just grow it out. A couple lines in the morning every other day, and I'm oh. good. 
interesting way of waking up. <laughs> yes, come you on. You know, most people do coffee. <laughs> Couple of <laughs> cool. Uh, so, lines lack of hygiene and the ability to grow a beard will allow for a very nice jaw, a nice jaw structure. It, it's it's played out. Yes, so I love everybody. it. I love it. Beard oils. I mean, yeah, just treat yourself. Yeah. So within the Finley Corporation, what do you think is your most favorite area that we work on, or where 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 do you find we do a lot of different things? in reference to community involvement? Oh, community involvement. Um, I think this Finley Athlete of the Week thing is awesome. I agree. I think that is so cool. I mean, I was always a troublemaker in high school. And you know, if you get, so athletes typically can be one or the, I mean, and there's hardly anything in between. But t they're typically, they're top of the class, or typically they have potential to be the top of the class, but they like to screw around way too much, which was me. But, and I didn't have a lot of positive reinforcement to back up the, the good things. So like a lot of these kids, and a lot of these kids don't, you know what I mean? Like right. the average income, the average credit score, like the whole thing in Bullhead City altogether as a whole, um, doesn't like produce a top prior, or a, um, a top of the class senior, or right. um, citizen, Samaritan, Correct. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So a lot of these kids could actually probably really benefit from this positive reinforcement that we go and give them. I mean, it's actually a pretty cool thing. I mean, they go and they hand out awards at the end of it. Um, I mean, you get you go and have a pretty cool highlight tape or something from the week before, yeah. and then you go get pulled out of class to get recognized on social media by thousands of people that you've been killing it, you've been doing great, you're performing well. I mean, that's that type of positive reinforcement, I believe, can kind of just transfer into a whole bunch of other things in their lives. And at such a young age, who knows? Maybe it doesn't impact anybody. Maybe I think it impacts important. one person. I think that's enough. I think, I think that cool. I struggled a lot uh, jumping out of high school for mainly the whole deported thing. But initially, I didn't have a lot of structure in my household, essentially. Um, so jumping out of high school, I didn't have certain discipline factors. You know, I was almost babied, I want to say, to where I was kept in glass. And then when I was introduced to the real world, you know, things got very real very quickly. And uh, Well, you also experienced something that not a lot of people would experience. So I don't, yes. I don't know that maybe you lacked anything. Maybe you just got thrown in a much harder situation than most people deal with, it was, which is being deported at the age of 18, having to go which, back. I mean, the term is voluntarily left by force. So, I, you know, it was my decision. I just didn't have another one. I think that story in itself is interesting enough to have its own talk show on, but I would like to dive into a little bit more with you. Yes. Because I think now, because I always wonder this to myself, so you had left from, from everything you know to being in the United States, right? Correct. Um, in a, an American school, you grow up with American friends, like the whole nine yards with a couple exceptions, right? Right. So then you completely jump and change everything that you've ever known as far as you were a young kid jump into a completely and entirely different country with completely and entirely different laws and rules, expectations, like the whole nine yards, experiences and everything, and then you come right back. So did you suffer culture, did you suffer culture shock twice? Like going into it and, and then, then returning? coming back? I mean. I would want to say that I, I suffered a larger culture shock coming back because when I went out there, a lot of the culture is already kind of oriented around how I am with the exception of like I guess what you're referencing is like the structure of communities the structure of law enforcement I mean it's you know it's it is what it is it's a corrupt country you know and uh, I had the blessing of having family out there you know and uh, I was accommodated by them and stuff and I was accommodating as well but uh, it was definitely a very different world um, one that my first three or four months, I was really kind of afraid of being out there uh, because of everything that was being displayed on the news at the time. You know, you, you go on Facebook and you see people getting their heads chopped off and stuff. So I so just like a natural fear of what I mean, which obviously I've been to Mexico several times. I've never experienced anything negative there. Right. But the, just the natural fear or a healthy fear, I guess you'd say, going into a country like that that you've not experienced as being um, your permanent home of residence. You already have a certain perception right. in this country of what that country is. So even you, natural born Mexican citizen coming here, you still have that same fear going back. Only because I was brought over at seven months. So I didn't genuinely like no feel like it, yeah. I had any, I, I didn't even know any of the family members that I met down there. 
So when I went you down, you got dropped on their plate like that. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. No. Yeah. They so it were, wasn't even like you guys that met up at Thanksgiving once a year. Like no, guys, because you that was a subject to them your niece coming your here. Nephew. So they, it's very hard for Mexican citizens to get uh, visas, you know, to come in because so many of them are applying, right? And then so many of them are not. So it's very <laughs> difficult, right? Yeah. Um, it's a lot easier for the for us to be able to enter over there and not which you them. guys didn't do much off, off they the didn't come over i had a few uncles and stuff that would come over and visit us and stuff but i wasn't able to go there because i wouldn't be able to return so oh, there was no yeah. way of me going and down you there. weren't you weren't supposed to be gone for three years right it was supposed to be like a year yeah my lawyer said six months you know because he uh, what happened was before i became a legal adult um i had to leave the country legally no, not before, excuse me, 180 days after my 18th birthday, I had a grace period. So I had to leave within those 180 days to be able to return legally. So essentially what they want is for you to be able to enter the country legally one time, you know. So my scenario was I never entered legally, you know. Right, but right. because of my circumstance, I left, signed a document stating that I legally left so I can apply to return legally. Um, and that's what I did. But it took me about three years. So... I mean, okay, so like for an example, what we have going on in the market right now, we have people ordering cars and we give them certain timelines, things get pushed off by the manufacturer. That's frustrating and it could, you know, definitely affects the way that somebody's day or maybe even their week goes. But with you being told six months and then you get returned, you get to come back to your family and all your friends right. that you've known for the last 18 years of your life and they eventually end up pushing it off a total of another two and a half years on you. Were you driving insane? Did you start to lose hope altogether? Or? It was scary because uh, the way I traveled was um, I, I pretty much traveled the coast, Baja California. So I was in Ensenada. Then I went to San Luis near the Yuma border. Then I went to a small fishing village. Then I landed in Rocky Point, which is, you know, a tourist attraction, Puerto Penasco. Um, and what was the question again? So how, how I mean... It must have been a little scary to for them to push it off a total of three Oh years. yeah, okay, so it was, but I also had already adapted to the lifestyle out there at that point. So at that point I was pretty much a eighteen, nineteen and twenty year old without any rules, living in a country without any rules, you know, so I was out there making not the best decisions, just like you were out here making not the best decisions. Uh, so you know what I mean? Having making the best of having a heyday of it. Yeah, absolutely. I was definitely having a heyday putting myself in not the most safe scenarios, you know. So then you come back, right? You handle everything that you have to handle. You come back, and I believe that you ended up like bartending, waiting tables for a little while. Yeah, I originally came back, and I was a busser at Sawgrass, and I worked at McDonald's as well. And I quit McDonald's after like the second I didn't even know day. That. Oh yeah, because I went there, and I was trying to save up to buy a car. You know what I mean? Um, and they worked me for like an hour, and they're like, "All right, you're good." And I was like, "No, I'm out." I'm done. That was ridiculous. It was weird. <laughs> so I quit there. I was quite happy with that experience. Yeah, so I didn't do that. And uh, then I became a, then I wanted to become a server at, at Sawgrass when I became 21, but they said I was too valuable as a busser. So I quit there, went and worked at a loan company. Then Sawgrass, you know, hired me back as a server. Then I quit that and went to Albuquerque, New Mexico spontaneously. My best friend came through town and was like, come on, bro. And this is when the term YOLO just came out. So it was it, it was heavy, you know. I was like, lives. YOLO, bro. I was like, you're freaking right, YOLO. <laughs> and I just quit and left that day. Then uh, got shot out, out there, fell off a cliff, returned back here because I missed my mom after all that. Then I went to Panda Express. And they made me a host, which is weird. Which is a made-up position, right? It was because a made-up position because of how I interacted with customers. Because you, So typically, you go and you get your food. And you, you never really leave Panda Express saying, Man, that was the best customer service I ever had. Right. But you had a different degree of customer service. Yeah. They were like, we could probably actually benefit from this. Correct. And created a spot for you. Right. At a spot. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I had a little tray, and then I had my little folded napkin and hot sauce, chili sauce, <laughs> or the chili, soy sauce, and hot mustard. And I'd go around mainly to the older folks because they would share their meals and the Pepsis that they would get. You know, they would. It would be like this type of scenario, so I would just refill it for them and stuff. So I like doing it, but uh, eventually Sawgrass pulled me back in, and I did that. And then um, they they made me a bartender there, and that was a lot of fun. And then I just couldn't get out of the casino industry. I kept gambling. I just kind of felt like I was very alone. At the same time, I was surrounded by a lot of people. 
So um, one morning I ended up crashing my car on the third story of the parking garage in the Golden Nugget. I had to go open, and, uh, and I'm sorry, Sawgrass, right? Uh, this was a different time in my life, but I told my car, and in that moment, I was like, I don't want to do this no more. I need to leave Laughlin altogether. It's not healthy for me. And I texted my buddy Eric, and I told him, hey, man, I just told him my car and quit my job in case you know you know anybody looking for a job, which I did that with the intention of getting hired on as a right, car right, salesman. Reach out to you. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, I can get you a job right now. And yeah, you know, like a day later, I was working. But I remember that day because I quit my job, totaled my car, and it was like overcast outside, and I was at the riverside drinking a margarita. And I just sat there and thought about, okay, I've been deported, you know, I've got my ass kicked. Like, I've had a lot of things, and I just giggled to myself. And I was like, I wonder what's next in my life. I can't wait for the next thing, you know. And the car business. And then the car I'm very grateful for the leadership within uh, Finley Motor Company. And um, they've invested a lot of energy and time and, you know, training and money and, and making me the best version of myself and they continue to do so so right which i'd say we actually kind of got blessed with <clears throat> the people that we surround ourselves with because it's not like they're all just super intelligent they're just like very self-aware they're right like, they're all like coaches you know what I mean? correct and i guess if you don't want to be coached you could look at that as a negative like a lot of guys will come in like and, managers right you know what i mean like <clears throat> you'll get a lot of guys that come in at one point in time i'm i definitely sure as was and they want to rebel and go against everything and right you know not but when you actually kind of grasp what it is that the points they're trying to get across like genuinely i'd say every single one of our managers all have they they always put the try and put you in the best positions like we have gonzo who comes in and screams at us in morning meetings with excitement and enthusiasm yes. You have like your very own personal counselor, which is Rob Terry, who you go in and you throw anything at him and the guy's got an answer for it. Yeah. Chris Bancroft. Like a broken down answer about yeah. why your brain is doing what it's doing, you know, and, and then, it's awesome. Like you got Chris Bancroft who's got a book for every single situation that you could have put yourself in to, re to reference for knowledge. And Unf Yourself is the one he recommended for me. <laughs> Unf Yourself, yeah. It's been a great book. <laughs> and then you got Eric, of course, which who is just like, He's like your older brother and, and, and leading boss all at the same time. So, I mean, I genuinely now end up being in a better state of mind and understanding, being on the actual, because you're just recently switching to management too, right. right, in the last few months. So once you put yourself on this side of the fence, like it completely changed your entire lens, the entire scope on everything about it. And you really start to appreciate where they come from. I find myself saying to some of my subordinates, the exact same thing that I was told that I literally blew up. Right. Like, and that's what I think is the coolest thing, because I'm like, oh, God, no. I get it now. I'm that guy now. Like, no. I'm yes, this, no. I know. I'm that guy. And then I'm like, well, actually, there's so much meaning to it. Like, I, I wish these guys could really grasp it. And imagine how much, if we were, like, just a little, like, if you, if I knew now what I knew, or if I knew then what I know now, obviously, that same saying. I mean, imagine what you could do with it and how much quicker we could have been put up in management. I agree. I think that uh, a big thing is uh, time. I don't think that it's should be wasted and I don't think that not doing anything particularly is a waste of time but not allowing your mind to grow or working on your character you know those are things because everything in your mind and in your heart can be reprogrammed oh, and yeah. untangled and retangled if that's a word but I I agree with you wholeheartedly in the sense well, of our leaders speaking of time too another thing because I'd say that the number one reason that um, everybody ends up jumping in the car because uh, you know to be quite frank with you like we know a lot of people around the community a lot of people see a lot of success in you me Joe Gage Hayden a, like a young group of, right. of people they see a lot of success and everybody jumps right into it head first thinking that it's just gonna come this way right well speaking of time a lot of people don't realize the actual time that this job actually like requires from you and we went through the worst of it. I mean, eight to seven every single day for this, that, Bells, and the other. everything. You know what I mean? And that was probably at the previous dealership. It wasn't, it's actually never been so bad at Finley. But have you noticed how much more lenient everything has been? Right. How much, because I remember I went to a finance school in Oklahoma to where I got my certification to be a finance manager. And one of the number one things that they had said was that um, the car industry has a hard time catching up with current times. Agreed. Like everybody works a 40 hour, sh a 40 hour work week, right? Well, you work in the car business, you work a 70 hour work week. You know I mean, you're working 13, 14 hours a day. Well, again, to lead back to our leaders and really how, they, how they've come to mold and create such a good team is they're not very stubborn when it comes to that. Like I remember when we first started in management, eight to seven every single day, you got one eight to five or two eight to fives a, yeah. a month. 
but if you had something working, you had to stay, so it hardly ever played out. Well, it's now come to the point where you get a couple eight to fives a week. You get every other weekend is a three-day weekend, and I mean, I just think that it's amazing. We work like blue-collar hours now. It's great. You know what I mean, it's it's been awesome. So I think it's helped a lot. It's like refreshed my mind the way that we work that way. I'm sure that you feel the same way. I agree. Even as a salesman, we worked a ton more hours. It allows you to coordinate your life and uh, be organized. Right. I mean, and then it gives you a little bit more. Um, what would you say? Like I have more more time and energy that I would like to invest into things, like I said, like the house. If I didn't have any lenience on my schedule with that house, that house would still be being worked on. But just like anything, you didn't get to that point until you first put in the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's like a big thing is just like he's saying, you know, he didn't actually start scaling in his life until he had an open mind or until he was more coachable. So it's that's pretty much what I would want anybody watching this to take from this is, you, you have to have an open mind and you have to work on your character in order to genuinely influence your life. It doesn't play out any other way. And you have to put in the time and effort towards it. Um, and that's in everywhere you look. That's the formula, period. Yeah, um, 100% commitment. Yeah, but in right. general, Donnie Reynolds, um, hobbies, just quickly, what, what do you think would be the first, the top three hobbies that you have to do in this town? So. I'm actually a pretty compulsive person, so like when I get into something, like I get into it really hard, and then, but my only downfall is I, send, I seem to like fall out of it fairly quickly as well. Like I, I genuinely envy people who are like completely caught up in the same thing all the time, right. with the same level of investment and excitement that they've had since day one. Like it's hard for me to be passionate about. I mean, it's cool because I experience a lot of other things. So like I dove really, I dove head first like really hard into golf. And uh, obviously, I sucked at golf. I was never really good at it. Started getting better, started getting better. You know, I bought all these cool golf clubs, like all these cool golf shirts. Like, I went and spent like 100, 100 bucks on a golf shirt, another $100 on a, a pair of golf shorts and pants, and then like $200 on a golf sh um, pair of shoes, right? And right. then got myself a nice hat. Like, I looked so good, dude. And I went out there to go golf and hit a triple bogey on the first hole. <laughs> I it wasn't like plus something. No, it was, well, it is plus three. It was unfortunate. But there's a name it could have been worse, like yeah. on the Wii, yeah, Nintendo Wii. I got plus six. A I lot of those. So, I it. mean, I dove really hard into golf, and I did that for a while. Um, you know Hayden and Joe, like, they're super into the off-road stuff. So I went and jumped in, had a Razor. I bought the Polaris Razor. I had that for about a year, which was also cool. I mean, I, so I bought that thing, and I invested a ton of money into it. Um, I put like brand new wheels and tires on it. The day that I put my new wheels and tires on it, I rolled it. Actually, the night before, I set it on its side. So we were just driving, which it's actually a really cool little trail over there in Mojave Valley. Are you allowed to do that? Can it die if you set it on its side? Side or back? Isn't that a thing? Is that like a turtle? Not like a razor, right? You're right. Yeah. So anyways, so... We're, me and my buddies are in it, um, a couple of buddies from out of town, and we're going through these windy trails, windy trails, and these trails come up pretty high and um, pretty steep on the left-hand side. Well, I'm just having fun, so I'm just trying to get through it as quick as possible and going round and round. Well, I ended up going way too fast on one and sent myself way too high up on the side of the hill and completely set it on its side, which wasn't too bad. You know, everybody's hands were in the vehicle, so nobody got hurt, no, no big yeah. deal. Um, <clears throat> the next day... I mean, we obviously had to lift it up that night, and we drove it home. I was like, all right, we're probably done playing around in the middle of the night. Right. So then the next day, I went and I dropped it off at Ron's Tire Pros, and I got a new set of wheels and a new set of tires on it. And um, These were I, the bronze ones? Yes, the bronze cool. ones. It looked really cool. Well, then I had a couple other buddies that come into town again. Actually, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, a couple other buddies that come into town, and Gage. Gage. So the and other ones were buddies, and then it was Gage. And then, yes, and then Gage. So buddies and Gage showed up. <laughs> so then what happens is the guy that's with us is like six foot two. He's built like a, a Spartan. Like he's a very big guy. But <laughs> for whatever reason, um, Gage got to the front seat first. So and there was three cars. <laughs> there was three or four cars of us. So we have this giant guy sitting in my back seat, crammed up and everything. And I didn't have a sound system at the time. I just had a big blue speaker. Yeah, <laughs> Gage calls shotgun. Scoots the seat all the way forward because he can fit. You know this little guy. So then we're we're driving and we have three cars. Hayden's driving a car. I'm driving a car, Joe's driving a car, all of them are full. Thank God I didn't have any women in the car with me. But <clears throat> I'm driving and they're like, all right, who's gonna lead? And right when they said that, I just jetted out in front of all of them. Cause I don't, uh, what right. happens is when you're in the back, I didn't have a windshield, so you just get dusted out the whole time. Hey, you either lead, you follow, you get the F out of the way, right? Right. You led. Lead, follow, or get out the way, exactly. So 
I'm jetting out in front of them, and I'm like like a marginal amount ahead of them, and I'm trying to, and I just got a light bar put on, so I'm kind of confident out there, but I'm, I can't see what's on the other side of these hills because of the way that the light bar is shining. That sounds sketchy. It was a little bit sketchy, but I didn't want to, like, obviously I'm trying to entertain people too, right? So ignorant me, trying to entertain, I'm like, I, I even slow down, and I look over at Gage, and I tell him, like, hey, bro, like, I really want to drive pretty hard for you guys, but I can't see what's on the other side of this. Gage is just like, screw it, hammer it. The very next hill that I go over is kind of set up to be like a tabletop, and I hammer it. You know, I'm going like 45, 50 miles an hour. I hit, I come straight up. I'm probably about like three feet off the ground, and then I'm like, oh, no. Like, if I could pause mid, mid moment and just be like, Jesus. This goodness. is the moment Donnie Reynolds knew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's how he knew. Yes, dude. So then I come up over this hill. I'm looking directly down this path. And the path makes a sharp right turn. Oh, God. So I'm just heading straight for an embankment on the left-hand side of the trail. So what happens is I land. My left tire lands up on the embankment. We're right-hand side on. And we flip up, and we roll end over end, oh, no. not just sideways. We roll like the whole back of the car flips up and over around us, and we rolled twice. You're like the zipper. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm a little bit embarrassed at the moment because I'm like, oh, dude, they're going to pull up behind me. They're going to see that I just wrecked this thing, trying to show off. So my number one concern is not who was in my car at the time, <laughs> which is not good. It should never it's be not good, you know, because Gage is hanging there like this. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy behind me is also hanging there. And uh, luckily he was okay because the thing didn't bust open. But I literally hop out and I start talking shit to him. I'm like, dude, get up. Stop wimping out. Like, you guys need to get up right now. Stop <laughs> <wimping out. laughs> So I'm being super incentive out. I'm trying to lift up the car by myself with them in it because I hear everybody else starting to pull up. And I'm like, ah. Oh. So they pull up. I'm just leaning. I'm like, all I can do is laugh about it. Well, I didn't even realize anything until <laughs> Joe looks over at me. And he's like, bro, did you see his face? And then I look over at my buddy's face, dude, and the Bluetooth speaker he was holding in the back when we rolled no. had come up and smacked him in the face, oh, dude. Oh, so he was busted up. Dude, it busted his lip. His lip was like this fat, dude, and he had long hair, right? And, <laughs> and this is the big boy. Yes, dude, it busted his face up. He had long hair. He wasn't wearing a shirt. He gets out of the car, and he's like, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> thinking <laughs> like just totally puts it on me like you idiot and i'm like bro you're all right just go take a rest dude so even worse than this right even worse than the whole thing he has long hair that he put up in a man bun well uh, he undoes it because his hair is <laughs> like he's just trying to get i don't know a breath of fresh air i don't know what he's trying to do relieve himself so then he goes and he sets down on the side of the road and he lays on his back out, <laughs> and he lays his head and into into an entire sticker uh bush of stickers dude <laughs> that gets all caught up and entangled in his hair dude like it was it was so bad his it was it was very very bad dude well we finally get the thing up and running it's completely my i have i have two sets of tires right one in the front one in the back the front set of tires one of them was literally like this i was riding on the sidewall of the tire to get it home and uh so obviously i'm pretty embarrassed i ruined everybody's night we're like 15 minutes into the ride everybody's got to turn around get us all home we got to get him cleaned up and bandaged up and uh engage turns on that song just keep rolling rolling, <laughs> rolling, rolling. <laughs> so donnie that was this is the first time you share this story with me, right? Yes. Yeah. So I would like the record to show that Donnie tried to sell me that razor. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about the story when he tried to sell it to me. I mean, he took me on a ride, took me to his house. I, I completely forgot about that. Oh, you forgot? You said it quite vividly <laughs> right now. I forgot that I tried to sell it to you. I would have not told you that story. If I no, you did not that. actually sell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't mentioned. <laughs> All right, yeah. What so, a freaking okay. car guy, man. <laughs> what a car guy. You know, that's super funny. I apologize. You don't have to. It is. I apologize, you know. No, I wouldn't have told you still. This would not have been. Anyways, anyways. Yeah, anyways. I apologize. So that was one of my hobbies, was riding razors. Now I'd like to say I've really become quite like a movie connoisseur. You've really been diving heavy I have asked you for some opinions on movies, and I've gotten some very good recommendations. Well, that's like kind of the, the thing I'm at now. I don't really think that, and, you know, I just put a, I've actually, actually, you know what? Monday, Thursday, and Sunday, I've become, like, obsessed with watching football. I'd never followed football a lot the last, um, like, yeah, football. Yeah, I right. actually follow it since I have the ball. I I, for forever, I always claimed to be like a football fan because I played football and I was pretty good. And I always understood the game. I watched it every once in a while, like Super Bowls. I'd watch Super Bowls. But right. It wasn't until freaking FanDuel came out and sports betting was a, was became legal in Arizona. I've been addicted to it ever since. 
because I got a parlay for every Sunday. You know what I mean? I've yet to hit one. We're what eight weeks into the season, and I've literally not hit a single parlay. The only time I made any money was when I just cashed out because I had won two out of the three on that leg, and I was like, you know what? That's good for me. You know, I took a win. And the team, when I took that cash out team, that um, ticket actually lost. So oh, look what I was if I doing. If I didn't cash out, I'd have been good. The moment you mentioned gambling, my finger started. Oh yeah, probably a little keno addiction, dude. That's crazy. Yeah, that's not. That's good. nuts. Subconscious coming out of you. So yeah. I've been watching a lot of football lately. Well, that's awesome, man. It's been cool. And we put the bar in the, in the garage, so the garage has a nice I little know, bar in it. I know. It's really nice. So it's actually <clears throat> like you wake up from a pretty rough Saturday night. You just go out there. You pour yourself like a, a red beer, a Bloody Mary, and then you have the game to watch. It's actually pretty nice. Dude. I feel really dumb because I put a little gym in my house, in my garage, and I feel like... Yeah, but you've gotten pretty good use out of it, don't you? It, it motivated me to go to the gym. Ironically, so I don't use my home gym, but I go to the gym now. <laughs> so I just feel like I could have no, probably, I, I probably would have been better off putting a bar in my garage as well. Because then it motivates you to drink. Right? It motivates me not to go to the hideout. But you put a gym inside your garage, Jansen, and then it made you want to go to the gym all the time. You put a bar with the same logic. You put a bar inside your garage. You're gonna want to go to the bar all the time. But the difference is, I never stopped going to the bar. And I did. I was not going to the gym. So I've consistently been at. You see what I'm saying? I mean, I guess it makes a little bit of sense. I feel like what you're saying makes sense too, though. I just mine makes more logical sense. Yours is just like probably more like Jansen sense. Which is also wise. pretty cool. My talk show, so. Our talk show, I think we've been in good so far. But as far as hobbies go for you, what have you been diving into? Because I don't think you and I have really, I mean, a couple times we've gotten together, but we haven't really hung out as much as we used to. You know, since you gave me been? those uh, golf clubs, I've been genuinely going and enjoying playing golf. I listen to an audio book when I'm by myself. If not, I'm, you know, with somebody playing golf and having fun. But for the most part, I, uh, I enjoy listening to the audio books and playing golf alone and maybe having a Bloody Mary and two Coronas and a shot of Jameson or whatever. Um, so, yeah. It's actually beautiful because we're back into the golfing prime time. Like for the next three months, it's going to be beautiful weather and we'll actually be able to go. I was starting to, the reason I stopped golfing so much is because the it's people hot. I golf with don't care if it's 130 degrees outside, they'll go golf. And if you mix alcohol with that, like it's right. just a miserable That's time. another thing. I kind of don't like golfing with a lot of people. No, you don't. I don't you really can't. enjoy it then. Yeah, I, think I enjoy the hanging out or whatever, but I feel like basketball is funner with people and golf is like, the one or two homies, but I, I think people. you go four people and you just play like a two two v two scramble, like it's super fun, and it keep everybody going. You get through the holes a lot quicker, but yeah, once you start adding like four or five people, six people, and then you're all playing your own ball, then it it gets pretty pretty difficult to keep you entertained, especially if you were pretty rough the night before. Then you come in and you're already not feeling. You have well. a lot of hangovers. It sounds like. Yeah, it's a typical Sunday morning. Yeah. That's why I like to go and enjoy myself. But if you're going to go spend that whole time sitting in 130 degree weather, sitting in a golf cart, and you have somebody like Hayden driving, you know, uh, I fell out of that cart two or three times because of the way he drives. I've actually, there's been several times where he's yanked me super hard to the left, and it just throws me out in a certain uh, yeah. way. I have to go throw up. Hayden pisses me off, bro. I don't know why. He just really pisses me off. I don't much like him at all myself. On that note, we appreciate you, Donnie Reynolds, um, trying to, I mean, I, Maybe we should do this together. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I very much enjoyed getting insight on a little bit about what you've gone through. And, uh, you know, I appreciate you asking about yeah. a little bit that I've gone through. And for anybody listening out there that's made it this far, you know, if you can take anything from this, it would be, uh, you know, plan your work and work your plan. Be open-minded, have a good attitude, and stay tuned for the next episode of The Jansen and Donnie Show. Stay tuned for a title as well.